All right, so welcome to uh, tonight's meeting of the Town of Deerfield Conservation Commission, September 1, 2022 at 7 p.m. Go through some of the <clears throat> preamble things. Let's see, uh, meetings normally held at the uh, municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL chapter 30A section 20 until March 31st, 2023. Uh, meetings are typically broadcast on the Frontier Community Access Television and the remote meeting connections uh, were all noted on uh, the town's website and uh, we're on Zoom and it looks like everything's working tonight. Everybody's connected, so that's a good thing. Um, meeting guidelines, um, we'll call them, uh, we'll call the order, the meeting to order officially. Uh, the meeting guidelines, uh, Town of Deerfield guidelines, speak one at a time, please. Um, we follow the Deerfield Code of Conduct to be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and non-repetitive in our comments. A um, couple of additional guidelines for myself. You know, please, we don't have a very, we have a pretty short agenda tonight, but, you know, please address the chair to be recognized to speak so we're not stumbling over each other. And please keep comp comments uh, as short as concise as possible as we move, move forward. Um, so with that, I'll identify the members to make sure that we have enough here for the meeting. Uh, if you just say you're present, uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, here. Uh, Sean Libby. Sean Levy here. Ben Byrne. I don't see Ben. Uh, Pete Law present. So we do have three out of the five for a quorum, so we can proceed. Um, we have a division of uh, between Kate and Sean of taking minutes. So who has minutes tonight? I Sean. do. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, we were sent talking about minutes, we were sent the uh, minutes from the August 11th meeting. Um, members present were Pete Law, Kate Devlin, Sean Libby. Uh, have you all received that, had a chance to review? Any additional comments or revisions needed on the meetings uh, as they're currently written? Everybody's shaking their head, I see none. So I would make a motion to accept the uh, Conservation Commission meeting minutes from the meeting of August 11, 2022, as written. Do I have a second? Okay, Devlin, second. Okay, I got a second. So the motion on the floor, we'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Pete Law, aye. So we, Amy, we'll put those uh, meetings, uh, those minutes into place for uh, August 11th. All right, so I think we got right through the boilerplate stuff of the agenda and we have one item to discuss tonight. Um, and we, we needed to do that to keep within some time frames and so forth. Um, let's see, I see Mr. Cunningham here. Do we have anybody else from the group? There's a couple of the phone numbers. I don't know who's identified here. Uh, but we do have the applicant, Mr. Cunningham, so we can proceed with the discussion. And I want to thank Hello, you. Um, I'm here. It's Bob Decker. Hi, Bob. How are you? Pretty good. Um, I'm on. Okay. I didn't have a Zoom link, so I had to call in on the phone number. Oh, okay. Well, we can hear you loud and clear, so that seems to be working as well. Uh, thank you for your patience, guys. Um, first of all, we had a meeting last week. I was unable to attend. I had some issues going on, but we tried to pull it off and we had some, uh, Zoom wasn't going to cooperate with us. So you can, you can only go so far with technology, I guess. So really appreciate your patience on that. Um, and we can uh, continue the discussion tonight. So with that, we'll continue the public meeting uh, discussion on the request for determination of applicability. that was filed by John Cunningham uh, for work uh, submitted on plans for 180, 198 North Main Street, uh, map 140, lot 16.1, um, relative to um, 
on the Wetlands Protection Act. And I will note that even though on the map it's lot 16.1, in this discussion we may be talking about uh, lots one and two, which are both owned by uh, Mr. Decker, from my understanding, but that are under discussion here. So I don't want to get confusion there on lot 16.1, which I believe is lot two, uh, but there may be some discussion on lot one at 198 North Main Street as well. Um, so I hope that's not too confusing, but with that, um, Mr. Cunningham, I know you've sent in uh, several emails uh, since the last meeting with some updates. I have them all here. I know, I believe all the commissioners have seen those and reviewed them as well. Do you wanna take a couple of minutes just to update from your perspective, what um, what your thoughts are? Oh, sure, and thank you very much. And I appreciate your gathering a special meeting for this. Uh, lot one is 140-16, lot two is 140-16.1. Okay. So to clear up the assessor's maps. Thank you. Yeah, the revisions that I sent have to do with a, a couple of things. First, extending the removal of knotweed across Mr. Decker's lot one, 140-16, so that twice as much frontage on the brook is being cleared up of knotweed, 250 feet length across the two lots. And I think, thanks to Mr. Decker, that's really an important improvement, I, I, I suspect. Um, the other part about clearing the knotweed is that I sent a revision from the uh, land stewards, land stewardship that they could do the removal, but they couldn't do a spraying this quickly before the frost. So their proposal starts in November after the plants have died in place and then clearing them and beginning the cycle of spraying and clearing in 2023. That still accomplishes the goal and their success is pegged at 95%. Just recently I found, a, and that was because I couldn't find anybody licensed and capable to do a spraying this short notice, but I have found integrative vegetation services, which I emailed through Amy, uh, and they can spray in the next couple of weeks before the frost um, and start the, the cycle as originally proposed by Professor Prostack. So we have two ways of doing it, the original way, or if we can't get a spray done in the next weeks before the frost, an alternative way that will work, but takes an extra cycle. So I prefer to get on it and get it done more quickly. Um, in exchange for doubling the area and completely getting the knotweed out from Jackson Road over to Lisa's property at 194, I'm hoping you will allow me to um, restore native species from the mean annual high water line towards the street for 70 feet and then keep 30 feet of lawn and grass for a couple of reasons. First of all, it'd be nice to have a backyard on our ranch house. Uh, secondly, the, the lawn will help prevent any erosion of soil towards the native species. And I also proposed to put a two foot high wall across the lot to catch soil erosion that might happen. Um, either natural field stones or Jeff Berniski, our landscape and demo guy, suggested cement blocks that can be used. Either way, puts a barrier across and pre prevents the native species restoration from getting uh, erosion from the soil. Um, Ward Smith said he thought it would work. He sent me an email saying yeah, he thought it would work. Um, and I had Steve Stone of Carl's Excavation out there this morning talking about the amount of fill, which I'll get to in a minute. But he also thought that a, a barrier like that would be very good in conjunction with lawn as well. So to have remove any concerns of erosion and soil getting down into the, the brook. Um, the other thing I did in the original revision was send a um, cartoon, I guess you would call it, a drawing with my showing of the setbacks and the, where the house could fit in an area that would not exceed the existing pad of the old barn. And um, I've since then also talked to Bob Walden and we put some stakes in the front 
And Bob Walden approved a 25 foot setback instead of a 30 foot front setback. So that could be pulled five feet forward, even more protective of the back where the brook is. Um, so that, that's something that's not in any of the written materials I provided. And um, Carl's excavating said they'd need to raise the area where the house is going to be built to, the, to be level with the sidewalk and the neighbor's yard at 194 and Mr. Decker's driveway in lot one. That adding of fill would not extend back into the, definitely not to the wall and not even halfway to the wall from the end of the house. So that it, it would be a natural grade and no dis, disruption of the native restoration area behind the wall. And most of the lawn area in front of the wall would remain as it is and not be regraded or, or sloped differently. Um, I think those are the chief points. If, if I've missed one, I'm happy to comment on whatever I might have not covered. Thank you. All right, thanks. Um, I'll open up to the commissioners for their comments uh, as well. I have a, just a couple of basic comments is that right now we have an RDA for what we're gonna call lot 16.1 or lot two. Um, so we can't even address what may be happening to the other, to, to Mr. Decker's lot 16.0, because that's not in the documents in front of us. So that's that's a little bit of a, a fine point that, you know, um, where our hands are tied, if you will, on, on some of these things. Um, the second point is there's there's some, you know, some new things in here um, uh, over the last week or two, uh, two foot wall, um, native species. Uh, we've talked about that, but now we're getting a little bit more formal on that, uh, fill require, um, et cetera. So I think, you know, if the fill require in the house and, and such, if we can keep out of the buffer zone area, uh, keep out of the jurisdiction, that would be much better, you know, beneficial to you. We didn't have to worry too much about it. Um, but when you're having a two foot wall, that's probably also going to take some at least trenching or footings and so forth. So that is more, that would be, and we we're talking, when I was talking with DEP and the wording for the process, uh, I have here someplace, but the one word that comes up is, um, that's, um, applicable is alteration to, uh, of the, of the area. And so that would be, and we're, as we're talking about the, um, not weed removal, it was felt it was an alteration, but now with a stone wall, it's a definite alteration, uh, et cetera. So I, I think we have a, a little bit more going on here and we probably need to bring this all to a, a, a final kind of, this is what we're gonna do, this is what I'm proposing to do. Um, but I will, uh, I will ask for comments um, from the other commissioners as well. Hi, it's Kate, Kate Devlin here. Oh, sorry, Sean. Um, I, I too picked up on the, okay, now we're talking a little more definitely about altering the site, um, which is, you know, that, that's, I understand um, why you're suggesting that. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess I don't have, a, I don't have a specific question, but I understand what you're now proposing. Sean? Uh, can you hear me or am I muted? I uh, got you, son. Go hear? ahead. Yep. Okay. Uh, no, I would just concur with Kate um, and, and Pete in the sense that um, this RDA in front of us doesn't address all that you want to do now. Um, and that uh, it would seem to me to fall within the requirements of needing a notice of intent finally. Um, because of the work within the jurisdictional distances of the stream. It, it seems like the project proposal from LSI um, made, made a lot of sense moving forward uh, sort of in that direction. Um, I like the addition of the additional knot weed control. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I think the whole project makes a lot of sense. I just think we need uh, more detail um, and better delineation in order to uh, prove moving forward. 
All right. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Kate. And I would say, uh, Mr. Cunningham, that yeah, as we looked at, uh, as we kind of look at this, um, a stone wall there done correctly um, in, with grassing and, and with the, uh, you know, uh, replanting of native species where is, is great. Uh, I, I think that would certainly help with erosion, certainly helps with what we want to do in that area. Um, but we'd also, if you're going to put a stone wall in, if, you, if we're looking at the maps and stuff, we'd want to know, okay, where's the erosion control go in during that construction? What type is it? Is it, is it wattles? Is it pails? Is it so forth? We'd have to come out and take a look at it. So we're getting to be a little bit more detail. I think your, your plans are coming together um, more and more so, uh, which helps us to uh, make some decisions as well. Um, so one option that we would have, uh, and I did note on uh, the documents I'm looking at it now, sorry, I'm not looking at the screen. It was from company LSI um, and part of their proposal to you was a permitting, um, submitting of a notice of intent uh, with the Conservation Commission and the DEP in September uh, and filing to include all of associated paperwork and maps, which would be really what we would be looking for, uh, a management plan, um, a butter notification, they'll take care of all that. Those are the things I think that would really pull it together. And with everything else that we know, and I think that the not weed plan, it could f flow pretty quickly of, of getting this uh, done. But I think it's one option that we have in front of us um, and that uh, we're talking with the commission on, but I wanted you know, to address you as well. We can close out this RDA uh, with a finding of a positive finding, which sends you off to do an NOI. And then you would bring that NOI back to us with more of the details that we're talking about with all your details of all your new um, walls and species and, and so forth. And a consultant like that would, will know how to put the maps together and um, you know, your, your map, I, I can see it drawn on with the 70 and 30, um, but we probably do need to have the, uh, you know, the GPS locations and the, the longitude latitudes and all that kind of fun stuff that the uh, uh, the wetland specialists and, and engineers have put together for us. Oh, I think you're speaking, uh, Mr. Cunningham, but you're on mute. Sorry for that. I was just saying, I, I understand those are very helpful comments and I uh, appreciate it very much. Thanks. Okay. And I would suggest, you know, if you want to do um, the other lot next to uh, 16.0 or lot one, whichever you call it, you know, include that all at once. Otherwise, we're going to have to have a separate one for that as well, because I can't speculate outside the paperwork that I have. Um, so if they did want, if you do want to go ahead with that, uh, if you and Mr. Decker agreed, that would be from our standpoint, you know, it'd be great to see less not weed out there and, and, and more, uh, of the uh, species that's supposed to be there in, in uh, erosion control. So if they could put all that together, bring it to us at one, then we could um, have the delineation on, on footage and just where you're at. That'll help us determine where you place your house to see if that comes into our jurisdiction or if that's just for Bob and the inspectors, uh, et cetera. So I, 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 would, I would think we would do that. And uh, any further comments from the applicant on, on that or? Mute again. <laughs> Sorry again. Uh, one technical question: If we do, we go that route, we get all outside to help us and do the NOI form three. Does that prevent us from doing the spraying in the next few weeks with the other company, Advanced Vegetation Systems, just to do a spraying without removing anything from the properties, or you know, um, is that something you could approve now as? I, just that single item? I don't, I'm just asking. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I can pull that single item out of the RDA in front of me because um, there's other aspects to it. Um, so we would have to I think that uh, we probably have to do a positive finding on the RDA as is and then send it to an NOI. Um, but if, you know, if, if people can get that done soon enough and uh, the long-term forecast I saw is going to be pretty warm through October, so they may be extend a, a few weeks. But if we can get it in front of us, um, let's see, the next full meeting is, uh, let's say we have a meeting on the 
8th, uh, but you wouldn't have time for that. So maybe the, by the 22nd. Um, and then if we had to do something, you know, early in October, we could, I'm sure we could pull something together real quick to, uh, to get that review. And, um, and I think it, I've already talked to DEP on it. This is kind of their um, preferred approach as well. So uh, I, I did, I've talked to Tom there as far as the, the knotweed restorations and so eradication. So I, you know, I think we're probably pretty good once we get more of the details. Oh, one more time. You're muted. I was just wondering whether a simple spraying only has to have an RDA or an NOI, or if that's something the owner could do without uh, approval. I don't. I don't know where the line is between what you do as a property owner, like Mr. Decker, and what you do with approval. Yeah. The Riverfront Act. So. Yeah, you're on the. You're you're working in the the buffer zone of the riverfront. Um, I definitely know if you're in the river, that sets off all sorts of things. Um, but if you're a centimeter off doing something like that. Um, this is on Libby. I, I think any cutting, severing uh, of any plant within the 100 foot of the stream uh, mean annual high water mark is regulated whether it's, you're the landowner or not. And besides, like we've said, this RDA in front of us doesn't even cover your lot. It covers Mr. Decker's. So like the spraying, like if we were to say, go ahead, um, no problem. It, it, based on what we have in front of us, it doesn't cover your work anyway. Yeah, right. it's, okay. it's, I, um, I, I think the term that, and I'm just looking it up in the, in the, in the regulation is, is altering and that would be an alteration of within the buffer zone. So, um, you know, it, it's, it, that's kind of the catch all that they put in at the very end. The last comment is alteration. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I, I don't think we could, uh, go ahead with that, but we will do, I know it, it's, and you've been very cooperative with this and we've been working through it for some time now. So if we can get the rest of the stuff put together and, uh, we'll do our best to, help you move it through that's being the volunteers that we are and meeting when we can but we uh, we'll see we'll do our best thank you okay any other comments from the commissioners any other comments from anybody participating on the call see a couple phone numbers i don't i know mr decker is one i just uh, want to thank you for your cooperation Oh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Decker. We'll, we'll keep on working through it. Thank you. Uh, any additional comments? If not, I would make a motion um, to close out the current RDA that we have in hand with a positive determination um, number three. And let me just show, tell you that the positive determination um, number three is that the work described on the reference plans and documents, which are, there's another one I could choose because they're not really confirmed as determination. They're kind of rough um, plans and documents, but um, we say the work described in reference plans and documents is within an area subject to protection under the act which it is, it's within that buffer zone from the riverfront, which will remove, fill, dredge, or alter that area. Therefore, said work requires a filing of a notice of intent. So I would put that motion out to the commissioners um, for a second that we um, close out the current RDA with a positive uh, number three on WPA form two. Kate Devlin, I'll second that motion. Okay, any further comments? Hearing none, I'll take a roll call to accept that motion um, on the table. Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. John Libby. John Libby, aye. Uh, Pete Law, aye. So that motion passed three to O. Oh. So, um,
so now Mr. Cunningham, uh, you know, we'll await the, uh, so this RDA is closed out. Um, uh, we'll await the NOI, um, your choice who you want to use. It looks like if you're going to use LSI, they've outlined it. Um, but whoever consultant that you want to do with that, um, and just uh, contact Amy for the forms uh, that'll be needed on that. And we should be good to go. And like I said, we'll, we'll do everything we can to move this along and see if we can get it done before snow flies, right? Okay. Thanks. All right. So that closes out that item on the agenda. Um, I'm not sure where I put my agenda for tonight. <laughs> oh, here it is. Um, okay. Uh, there's no additional old business. Uh, I was not made aware of any mail that we had to address uh, this evening. Um, I know of no other items um, that popped up within the last 48 hours prior to the posting. Um, our upcoming meetings, uh, next few meetings, we have another special meeting on September 8th um, for another number of continuing um, hearings on three or four NOIs. And then we'll have a regular scheduled meeting on September 22nd, both at 7 p.m. Any further comments from the commissioners or anybody else? If that, this is a, one of our shortest meetings ever, but I would take a motion to adjourn. John Libby makes a motion to adjourn the meeting at 7.27 p.m. I have a second. Kate Devlin, second. Okay, motion is on the floor to adjourn the meeting. Uh, roll call uh, to accept the motion. Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Sean Libby. John Libby, aye. Uh, Pete Law, aye. And thanks everybody so much uh, for all the patience and working through everything here. Uh, greatly appreciated. And thank you. <laughs>